What is up guys, Ross Thomas here for the Brotographer.com and today I'm kind of stoked to bring to you a comparison slash mini review of the Laowa 15mm F4 Macro versus the Laowa 15mm F4. 2-0D lens. So before we get started, my name is Ross. I am the creator of thebrotographer.com. I absolutely love content creation, photography, and video. I do some photography and video gear reviews here on this channel, as well as little tutorials, comparisons, and a whole bunch of other things. So if you like this channel, you like these videos, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe here to The Brotographer. So right off the bat, I am not a landscape photographer and I don't really shoot a ton of super wide angle stuff unless I need it for gimbal use or something like that. However, as a content creator and a business owner, I need to be able to use any lens for marketing or for getting my point across in any situation and that includes super wide angle lenses. Now I previously re reviewed the Laowa 15mm f 20D lens over at thebrotographer.com. That is a written review. I will link it in the description. So if you're interested in that lens, make sure and head over there and read that review. I was very surprised with the build quality and image quality from the 15 millimeter F20D from Laowa. It is a fantastic lens. It is a manual focus lens, so if you're looking for autofocus, this is not gonna be something for you. But because it's super wide, you can even get some good use out of it on a gimbal without the need for autofocus. But anyways, I was super stoked to be able to review this lens, very surprised at how much I liked it. So, Laowa also sent me out the 15 millimeter F4 macro lens for review, so I thought I would give this lens a chance. Now this lens is something that is way out of my comfort zone. First of all, it's a 15 millimeter macro, which is kind of crazy. It's another manual focus lens, which I don't really do that much with. And uh, it's kind of a funky looking lens. It's manual, has manual aperture ring. It's all de-clicked. And uh, it also has the ability to shift the focal plane, which is really interesting. If you're an architecture uh, photographer, you absolutely know what that means. All right, so I've got the Laowa 15 F2 0D here on the right and the 15 F4 macro here on the left. And let's just do a little visual comparison of them. The 15 millimeter F2, uh, in my opinion, is more well built. Uh, it is much heavier, much more dense, definitely has more glass inside it. I much prefer the manual focus ring over here on the F2 compared to the manual focus ring on the F4. This focus ring is really, I'm sorry, focus ring down here is really small and don't really prefer it. It's really big over here. Um, on the F2, we have a manual aperture ring here, which can be clicked and also de-clicked. Over here on the F4 macro, it is simply unclicked, and I much prefer, especially when taking photos, um, which is what I think most people would be using this lens for, I prefer to have a clicked aperture ring. Um, when uh, I do have an aperture ring. So I prefer the rings on the F2. Keep in mind this is almost twice the price, um, the 15 F2 compared to the F4. Uh, let's go over uh, one of my, I guess, worst cons of these lenses. And it's not really that big of a deal, but by far it is the lens hood and lens cap combination. On both lenses, you can't take off the lens hoods until you take off the lens cap. So on the F2, uh, the lens hood is metal and I actually really like this lens hood. Um, lens caps are also very nice. You simply just can't take off the lens hoods. I typically keep the lens hood on. The F2 0D, I really like it. And uh, But if you do want to put on filters, you are looking at a 72 millimeter front filter thread. Something that's really cool uh, with this lens, since it's designed for Sony E-mount lenses, is it's tiny, and you're actually able to put screw-on filters over here on, uh, on this one, and also here. Um, over here on the F4, you're gonna have a 77 millimeter 
front filter thread and you are going to be able to use screw on filters here too which is really awesome uh, the lens hood on the 15 f2 is awesome on the f4 it is a little bit lower quality it is plastic and it is much harder to get on it's really easy to get off but it's really hard to find the threads here to get on um, once you get used to it it's not that bad but just be aware of that so most of the time however I actually don't use the lens hood over here so build quality a little bit better on the f2 version compared to the f4 version now you may be wondering what on earth is uh, this huge section over here. Now this lens I do not think was designed for the Sony E-mount system and that is the mount that I have it in here. It, the F2 is designed for the Sony E-mount. So here is the flange distance adapter for the Sony E-mount. So there's a lot of empty space back here compared to relatively no space on the 15 F2. Now moving over to the F4 version, here's where this lens gets really interesting. First of all, you're able to uh, have a macro in a 15 millimeter, which is a really interesting look. Typically in macro lenses like my Tamron 90 millimeter macro, you have to use, I mean, there's a ton of compression in that lens and uh, when you get really close to your subject for that macro look, um, you get no background. However, with the 15 f2, you're able to get super close to your subject and still get a lot of background in um, the photo. So if uh, you shoot at a really narrow aperture, you're still going to be able to see stuff that's in the background, which is really uncharacteristic of a macro lens. So that is one of the unique perspectives that you're able to get with this lens. And it is pretty sharp as well, so the image quality is going to be pretty nice um, in that macro range. Typically macro lenses are really sharp anyways, but this one um, is no exception and it is really sharp. Really the biggest single feature of this lens that is interesting is its shift capability. So uh, tilt shift lenses are um, lenses that you are able to change the focal um, perspective of the lens and also change lines that go from diagonal to straight. So architecture photographers use tilt shift lenses a lot in order to um, accurately display lines in buildings and uh, things like that. Now this lens is not a tilt shift per se, but it does have some shift capabilities. Now what I found out when using this lens um, was that you don't get full shift capabilities unless you put it on an APS-C camera. So on my A7R 3 when I shifted the lens up or down, and this lens can shift up or down a maximum of six millimeters. See, so I've shifted the lens that way and I'm gonna shift the lens up as well. Uh, when I would do that on the a7R 3 I would get um, insane vignetting. Now, putting it on the a6500 changes the focal length to something like a 23-ish, um, 24-ish millimeter um, shiftable lens. And when you do shift uh, when using an APS-C camera for Sony E-mount, you don't get that insane vignetting, so that is an advantage. So what I'm going to do right now is overlay uh, what you can actually do with that shift capability. So what I'm going to do is put the camera on the A6500 and I am going to point the camera down. So if you notice on the top right hand corner of the screen there's a Pilates reformer machine and that reformer machine angles from top right to bottom left there in the right hand corner of the screen. Now in real life that is a straight line not a diagonal line but because there is always some distortion with super wide angle lenses that is the look you're going to get when you're facing it down. So how you counteract this in a super wide angle shot is to use the shift functionality. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my camera to be completely level, pointing straight forward, but now you're gonna see that the shot is basically uh, too tall. It has the ceiling in it, it doesn't have the room, and it's not the um, 
composition that we want in this shot. So now I'm going to shift the lens all the way down and you're going to see that not only does it change the composition, but it also changes the line in the top right on that Pilates reform machine to be straight. Now, um, this is just kind of a rough example of what this lens can do, but I think it's a good example of the shift capability of this lens and how you can correct lines. So if you are a architecture photographer and you're looking for a pretty, sheet, a pretty cheap lens um, that can correct lines, but all, you also get something interesting out of it like a 15 millimeter macro, I think that the 15 millimeter F2 I'm sorry, 15 millimeter F4 is going to be something that might be good for you. Now on the other end of the spectrum, if you are a landscape photographer and uh, you don't really need the macro capabilities, keep in mind that you are able to get really close to your subject with this lens as well. It's not quite macro, but it's pretty close. And with a 42 megapixel sensor like the A7R2 or R3, uh, you're going to get pretty close to macro capabilities anyways. But if you're a landscape photographer and you want um, a little bit less distortion in your images uh, with just absolutely gorgeous image quality, I think that the 15 millimeter F2 is gonna be something that suits your needs a little bit more. Also, if you're an astro photographer and you need uh, that extra stop of light, keep in mind uh, this lens lets in four times or two stops more light than the F4 does. So if you are in a controlled environment and you can control your lighting, go ahead and grab this F4. If you have a limited budget, grab the F4. But if you have a little bit more money to spend and uh, you want that extra light, you also want a clicked or declicked aperture, this 15 millimeter F2 may be the better lens for you. Anyways, those are some of the differences of these lenses. All in all, they're both fantastic. Uh, they're really great lenses. I've enjoyed shooting with both of them. I think that for my needs, the F2 kind of suits it. Yes, it would be nice for me to correct some lines when I'm shooting indoors, but I don't do a lot of indoor architecture inside my gym. The F2 allows me to get a unique wide angle perspective on a gimbal and st still blur out the background just a hair, creating a little bit more of that cinematic look, if you will. And uh, I just personally prefer this lens. I'd say specialized, general, in the right hand here with the F2. So those are kind of my pros and cons of the 15 millimeter F2 and the 15 millimeter F4 macro with shift capabilities from Laowa. These are both awesome lenses. The F2 is going to run you about $850 and it's just better built. Um, image quality might be a little bit better. It's going to get you four times more light, probably better for astrophotography. The F4 macro is going to get you F4, so four times less light. However, it's going to get you macro capabilities and also that shift uh, functionality. So if that's something that interests you, this is also $499, so much cheaper. If you're running uh, that Sony E-mount system and you have an A7R 3 and you want a 15 millimeter, F4 is going to be awesome. If you also have an A6500, you get the shift, full shift capabilities out of it. So for me personally, I do prefer the F2, like I said, but you know, your mileage may vary. Both of these lenses are awesome and you can't really go wrong with either one. Anyways, if you found, find this little comparison and review helpful, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to The Brotographer. Make sure to head over to the underscore Brotographer on Instagram where I post a ton of behind the scenes, gear shots, and we can have full-on discussions there through either direct message, stories, or in the comments on those pictures. Make sure to head over to thebrotographer.com. Make sure and read the full written review of the 15 millimeter F2 and the 15 millimeter F4, which should be out in written form by the time this video goes up. Anyways, I'm Ross Thomas for thebrotographer.com. Thanks so much for stopping in. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.